All right. <clears throat> so last question in this section. This is a really classic problem. So here we are firing a bullet. We're going to fire a bullet, seven and a half grams, into this lovely one kilogram block. When it hits the block, it will actually lodge inside the block and stick in there. So this block is hung from a one meter wire, so kind of like a pendulum. And when it, uh, the bullet hits it, so this thing's going to swing up, and we're told it reaches a maximum of 57 degrees. And from all that information, we're supposed to figure out what the original velocity of that bullet was. Now, in this case, let's say I shot this bullet from a more powerful gun. Great, then it would have a higher velocity. And what would be true about this angle? Larger. Yeah, it'd be a greater angle. Great. So that's kind of the, the premise, and we can backtrack through. Now, it's a two-part problem here. We first have to deal with the bullet lodging itself in the block. What's going on there? Perfectly inelastic, yeah. perfectly inelastic collision. The bullets colliding with the block, they stick together. That's perfectly inelastic. So and in that case, it's perfectly inelastic. What is conserved? Momentum. momentum and nothing else. Great. So we'll have conservation of momentum in the first half. Great. So, but after that collision happens, we have conservation momentum, then this block is going to swing up to this maximum of 57 degrees. So what do we have going on there? Transfer of, Transfer of energy more specific. So what kind of energy does it have when it first, after the bullet lodges in there, what kind of energy does this, this, this thing have? Kinetic. Kinetic, but it's getting converted into? Potential. Potential. And assuming no non-conservative forces, what's true? Conservation of? What kind of energy? Mechanical energy, yeah. conservation of mechanical energy. So that's how we're gonna treat this. So two part problem, we'll first deal with the collision, then we'll deal with this conservation of mechanical energy. All right, <clears throat> actually I guess we'll work this backwards since we don't know the velocity, that's where we're gonna work it backwards too. But the, so the second part of the problem, conservation of mechanical energy. So we have this one meter cord. So this is its lowest point, then at this point I will assume it has zero what? Potential energy, awesome. But we'll figure out how much kinetic energy it has. Now this is its highest point, so here I will assume what? Kinetic energy zero. Kinetic energy zero. And its potential energy is at a maximum. We need to figure out what that is. So what's the formula for potential energy? Yeah. Uh, that's kinetic energy. What is potential energy uh, for gravitational? That's MGH. So we're MGY, same diff. So in this case, how much higher is this block bullet combo here than originally? So if we kind of show this original one meter distance, now it's a certain amount higher than that amount. So in this case, you know, I have one meter and this is still one meter. So, but I can break this up into a triangle. What is the length? of this side right here. Cosine yeah, cosine one meter times cosine 57. Cosine 57. <clears throat> and what does that equal? Uh, Give me one more sig fig. Five. Five, four, five? Yeah. Great. And so then my potential energy here So what was the mass of this thing, or do we even know? What is it? What is it? Yeah. Oh, plus the thing. Yeah, there's a bullet stuck in it now. So what's the mass? Cool. One point what? Zero zero. There we go. One point zero seven five kilograms, nine point eight meters per second squared, and then a height of. Actually, what is the height? The height is one minus, right? So yeah, how much higher are we than where we started here? If this whole length is one and this is 0.545, then what is our height? It's 0.455. Great, that's what's going to get plugged in here. Cool. Now before you actually plug and chug here, let's go back over here. So. Before it starts swinging up, what initial velocity does it come with? Well, that's what we don't know just yet. So but what's the formula for kinetic energy? 
1 half mv squared. And so in this case, that would be 1 half times a mass of 1.0075 kilograms times v squared. This is right after the bullet lodges itself in. So, and then they start swinging up together. Okay, but notice what's true about the kinetic energy here and the potential energy here. They're equal in magnitude, sweet. So if I set them equal, what's gonna cancel anyways? The one mass. Yeah, so one half, you know, we'll just leave it as one half m v squared equals m times 9.8 times 0 0.455 meters. The m's cancel anyways. So if we solve for the velocity, what do we get here? All right, 2.99 meters per second. So that was our initial velocity of the bullet block combo as it started swinging up. Now, let's transplant that back to the first half of this problem. So notice it's weird because that was the initial velocity as the combo starts swinging up. But now, that's gonna be our final velocity after the collision. So in this case, momentum is what's conserved for the first half, right? So we're gonna say that Initial momentum equals final momentum. So for initial momentum, which of these two objects is moving? The Just the bullets. That's where all my momentum comes from. So here would be 0 0.0075 kilograms times some velocity we would like to know. And then they stick together. And what's the total combined mass? 1.0075 kilograms. And what velocity they have immediately after the collision did we discover? 2.99 meters per second. Awesome. What was the velocity of that bullet? Four hundred and one point six. Great. I'll round to 401. Yeah, velocity of that bullet was 401 meters per second. So unlike some other examples I've given you where they're unrealistic, this is totally realistic. So pretty routine velocity for like a nine millimeter bullet. So one, one thing to note on this guys, by the way, so I could set this up a little differently. In fact, I plan on putting a question on my website like this. So fire the bullet into the block and instead of being hanging on a pendulum, you can have this block on a track on a surface that has friction. So and basically, the greater momentum imparted to the block bullet combo, the, the farther it'll slide along the track. And so if I give you the coefficient of friction between the block and the track and how far it slides, you could figure out how much work is done by friction and backtrack and use that to figure out how much the block bullet combo is, what its velocity was right after the collision, and then again, backtrack, same kind of thing. So, so when you fire mm. a gun, the kickback, yeah, why is there, why yeah, is there why recoil? Is there, what is the... Because, like, oh, because the travels forward, that's... There's a, so we have to... There's going to be conservation of what? Momentum. Momentum. Because if something moves this way, something else has to move this way. So oh, notice... Yes. So if I fire a big old cannonball... You're going to... Then there's... I, that's why cannons weigh so much. Because oh, no. I have this big old cannonball. To give it a lot of momentum this way, something else has to get equal amount of momentum going the other way. So if I put something way heavier, it's not gonna move as much. So okay. it's also why, you know, do you want a lighter gun or a heavy gun? Well, that depends. Yeah. It really They're depends so heavy. because, awesome. but the nice thing about a heavy gun is because it has a bigger mass, oh. then it has a smaller recoil velocity. Yeah, so it's a catch 22, you know?